HVAC 360 is brought to you today by plumbers who remind us that waste flows downhill, don't bite your fingernails, and Fridays are paydays. With wisdom like this, it's obvious why plumbers drain the competition. Take time out of your day today to thank a plumber. Welcome back. Hey, what's up? This is episode number 87. I'm Matt Nelson, the host of HVAC 360, helping you go further and faster in the field of plumbing this week. Here we talk about stories, interview experts, and generally pump up your plumbing and HVAC knowledge. Now, if you're new here and this leaves you wanting more, go to my website at HVAC360.com and subscribe and you'll get access to weekly bonus material uh, that I'll send out. So what we have on tap today, this week I catch up with Aspie's Society President, Mitch Clemente, and we talk about all things Aspie. Aspie, for those who don't know, and shame on you if this is, includes you, stands for the American Society of Plumbing Engineers. So stick around after the interview and I'll share my three favorite takeaways as usual from the conversation. And now let's cut to the tape after a brief word from our sponsor. Today we're talking with Aspie Society President Mitch Clemente. How are you doing today, Mitch? I'm doing good, Matt. How are you? Good. So, uh, I guess uh, if people don't understand Aspie, can can you kind of break down who Aspie is and kind of what their mission is? Sure. Uh, Aspie is a compilation of uh, individuals that are involved in plumbing systems design. Um, And basically, kind of our mission is to enhance and promote the profession of plumbing engineering. Uh, And our goal is to just make sure that we make sure things are good for the safety and well-being of the public. You know, we kind of look at things uh, here in our country and also on a global level as well. So so we've got a good uh, reach out to uh, people in the community that we do try to do the best for them. Right, and I, I think that I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand the impact that that plumbing has on society and the the health of society. That be the you know is that kind of your kind of perception too? Yeah, I agree. It's uh, plumbing engineering has, has gotten so much more complex, and uh, we've gone to so many discipline specific uh, designers and engineers for these types of systems. So it's uh, it's important that uh, you know ASPE plays a very important role in helping design plumbing related systems. So what what are some of the backgrounds of your members? I mean, what what um, you know what you know, what really what backgrounds do they come from? Well, we have all different types of uh, members. You know, we have, you know, we have got designers, we've got engineers, we've got principals of firms, code officials, manufacturers, manufacturers reps. We even have code officials uh, that belong to ASPE. And uh, it's important because it's, they all have different areas of expertise and all contribute to different facets of uh, plumbing system design and installation and construction of them. It's, uh, the other thing, too, is that our members have a lot of resources out there, so they can reach out to all these different types of individuals with their backgrounds if they have questions. And it's it's a good uh, way to help with our designers and engineers so that they make sure they put together the, the best designs. And I think we're a very well-rounded organization with many different areas of expertise in these types of systems. Yeah, I think you pointed out something very, very positive. I think, you know, a lot of people think of of networking for net, networking sake for, you know, career advancement, things like that. But really, when you get involved in professional societies like ASPE, um, you do have this network of experts that you can kind of draw from and use your common, you know, membership that, hey, you know, we're all, you know, ASPE members. Hey, can you help me out trying to figure out this one particular detail? Uh, or this one specific piece of information that I have a question on. Yeah, ag- agreed. So, uh, I guess what what do you think uh, for younger engineers? What what are some of the things that you feel that they really struggle with in regards to plumbing design? I think I think there's a couple things they struggle with. Uh, you know, as they come out of school into the industry, you know, 
The first is just understanding plumbing engineering in general. You know, there's very few schools out there that teach plumbing design. So we have to depend on our more experienced engineers to kind of mentor them uh, as they come into the workforce and just teach them about our discipline and, and how to best design these systems and how to take the right approach for their clients. Uh, you know, another thing I think our younger engineers uh, struggle with is maybe not so much plumbing engineering, but just communication in general. You know, there's so many different ways right now to communicate with uh, fellow workers and clients through emails and texts, and uh, it, it just becomes uh, an easy way to reach out to somebody, but sometimes we lose messages that we're trying to get back and forth, and Sometimes, uh, I know, in our office, we try to encourage our uh, younger engineers to sometimes just pick up the phone if, if they can't get the results they're looking for through other means of communication. So, so I, I think it, it, it's getting better, but uh, uh, but we need to still work on that, though. So I think that you, um, as far as older engineers, some more senior people, um, is there something that they struggle with as well? Um, it, it depends on the individual's background. You know, you take a look at an experienced engineer. Uh, they've touched on many different systems. But let's say, for instance, you have a, uh, a hospital or medical gas system that you need to design. That older, experienced engineer may not have ever done a uh, med gas system in their career. So it's it's something they need to learn about before they start putting together that design. Um, you know, you've got some engineers that work on different types of systems through their career, but they may not touch every type of plumbing system that's out there. So you've got to go back and kind of touch on the basics, kind of educate yourself regardless of how long you've been in the industry. A, a senior engineer may not know everything, uh, but they're going to be a good resource. And then as you can reach out to your fellow members uh, that may provide some of that input that helps you through your designs also. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of times, you know, and we've we've heard, heard this, you know, come up uh, come up a time and time again, is that you're not always doing one particular thing all the time. So, um, you know, like the med guess example you gave, you may not know necessarily how to size that. So you may need to, you know, again find those resources. So, uh, are there any best practices that uh, that are out there? Well, I think the best practice to me is to, even before you start a project, to understand your client's needs. If you don't understand it and you're unclear what their expectations are, you're not going to get off to a good start and you're definitely not going to have a good finish. Um, you know, you need to be thorough. You need to make sure you document all your communications with your clients and your fellow team members so that nothing slips through the cracks. You make sure you cover all your bases. And it keeps you out of trouble in, in the long run, too. And then this way you make sure that you meet every, everyone's needs on a project and everybody walks away with a good experience. Excellent. Um, so I guess what are, you, what are some of your favorite resources as a, uh, you know, a plumbing designer? You know, SP has uh, many different technical publications that are available. Our plumbing engineering design handbooks are a great resource to me. You know, we publish those once every year. We've got four handbooks. Uh, but then we also have many other different technical uh, publications that are out there that uh, that are available to help you in those situations when you come across a, a new topic or new design. Uh, we also have archives of webinars uh, that we post to our website, another great resource for our members. So, uh, I uh, myself have gone back many times to watch a, an old webinar to kind of brush up on a topic that I may not have touched on in a while. Uh, so I think they're, they're, they're a very good resource uh, for, for many people. And, and it gives you the guidance that you need to, to kind of walk through a program. And, uh, and it also helps you, too, is reaching out to the, uh, the older members, the experienced people that uh, may have done some work on a specific type of project or specific type of system. Uh, that'll kind of help you walk you through it. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, understanding and connecting with people who do it, uh, you know, other engineers who do this more on a consistent basis, because, you know, a lot of people might say, hey, you know what, you know, why cover a plumbing topic on an HVAC podcast? But if you're in the industry, you understand that there's a lot of cross connect between, you know, being a HVAC designer and being a plumbing designer. Um, unless you get into a, a larger firm where there might be, you know, just specifically plumbing engineers. But, you know, if, in that case, it's it's really nice to know those guys, um, you know, to, to be able to use them as a, as a resource. 
for uh, for getting your information. Sure, yeah, exactly. So uh, obviously, one of the things that uh, Aspie has done um, over the past, actually, how the I'm, I'm actually kind of talking about the the certified plumbing designer. They have a certification. How long has that been mm-hmm. in existence? Uh, that came about. Uh, I want to say it was probably back in the early '90s. So uh, it, it's been around for quite a while now. It, it's evolved over the years, uh, but it's just gotten better over time. And uh, it, it's a good way for those in the plumbing industry to get recognized for for their knowledge in plumbing systems. You know, to to be a candidate for the exam, you need to meet certain requirements uh, before you even sit for it. Uh, because it covers many different uh, facets of plumbing design. It's, you've you've got to be a well-rounded uh, designer or engineer to even sit for the exam. Okay, uh, But then someone that holds that CPD designation is uh, someone you can trust, I think, with the designs of your plumbing systems just because they've got the necessary experience. They've passed an exam. They've shown that they're knowledgeable in many different areas of uh, plumbing design. And uh, the other thing, too, is that those who hold that designation also have to take continuing education. You know, they need to earn 24 hours of uh, education over a two-year period to maintain that certification. So they're staying up on the latest trends and types of systems and products out there. So uh, somebody who has that de- designation, to me, is a, a very valuable resource to that project team. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I find anybody who I've, I've known to have that CPD has been, you know, a very, um, uh, a great resource. So in uh, ASPE, what are some of the new initiatives that are coming down from society? Uh, we have a couple of new ones that are coming out now, and they're relatively large initiatives that we have. Uh, the first right now is we're working on uh, to obtain a plumbing option under the Mechanical Principles and Practices exam that's offered by NCEES. As I mentioned earlier before, uh, plumbing engineering has become uh, very complex over the years, and we've gone to be so specific in our disciplines of who works on what type of systems for the designs. Uh, So right now we've got uh, some of our members going across the country that are reaching out to their state license boards uh, to talk about the complexity of these types of systems and the importance of adding a plumbing option uh, within the mechanical exam, which we, we feel is very important. Um, but we still have a long way to go, and uh, we've got a few states already that are on board. We need a total of 10 states to, to get approval to move forward with uh, NCES. So we're, we're on our way, but uh, like I said, we still got a way to go. Um, another initiative that we got going on right now is we're transforming our research foundation into a education and research foundation. And uh, the purpose here is to create new educational programs for our members. But they're going to be based on research uh, that we perform. Uh, so we think that's going to be very valuable and a great learning tool for our members to to see some of the uh, results of what we're doing in research and then us to provide the training for them so that they're more uh, well geared for uh, working on projects in, in their firms. Now, I mean, uh, and I guess just to give some people some perspective, they if they're younger and they don't necessarily understand or they might not be aware, kind of getting back to that, uh, that's, that's pretty exciting about getting a, a differentiation in the, uh, the, the professional engineering licensing uh, exam through NCEES. Um, and that's, uh, you know, because right now there used to be just one uh, mechanical, you know, you basically you'd go for and, and shift for a uh, mechanical uh, professional engineering license. Uh, but now they've kind of split that up um, because there is a, a bent towards those that are in manufacturing and those that are not in manufacturing. But it, it's not... Um, and I think other disciplines are doing that as well, whether it be uh, electrical or you know uh, other exams. So it's it's exciting that uh, you know plumbing definitely has that added complexity, like you said. But uh, to to have that differentiation, so I think that would be um, that would be pretty exciting. Yeah, we, we we think that's very important because, like I said, you know plumbing has become so complex, and uh, everybody is seems to be very specialized in the discipline that they work in and uh, and we think it's very important and uh, like I said we've got some states already that are already in agreement with that and uh, I think it will help those uh, coming into the industry too that they can kind of focus on uh, 
a little bit more discipline specific uh, to kind of make them more of an expert in the specific field that they choose to to go in for their careers. All right. So, uh, what uh, any final thoughts that you have, Mitch? Um, one thing I want to throw out is the uh, to me it's the importance of uh, people in the industry of attending their local chapter meetings. You know, ASPE has monthly chapter meetings in many different cities. I think we've got like 62 chapters around the country. And we offer technical training sessions every month. And to me, it's very important to get out and increase your knowledge in these systems. It makes you a more well-rounded engineer and designer, and it makes you a little bit more valuable to your employer also. Uh, but I also think, too, is that, you know, we, we always need volunteers. And, uh, you know, being a chapter officer, uh, when I first started in the industry and working my way up to society president, it, it's been extremely rewarding. And uh, I would encourage anybody to at least start at the chapter level and give it a taste and try it out and see what it's like. It's, it's a great experience. You meet a lot of people, and uh, there are a lot of great resources uh, for when you come across those designs in your office that you need to reach out to somebody. It's, uh, you know, I've, I've got a huge network of people that I can reach out to, and, and I thank it all to just being a volunteer and helping out and participating in those educational sessions that the chapters offer. So, uh, so definitely worthwhile. So if, if somebody is interested in getting more involved in ASPE, um, you know, where would, where would they look to, to do that? Well, they can go to, to our website, which is uh, ASPE.org, O-R-G, and, uh, or they can reach out. Uh, you know, once they go to the website, they can see what local chapters are around the country um, and find out when they have their meetings. And I would encourage them to attend a chapter meeting. And uh, there's, there's plenty of uh, people there at those meetings that can kind of help them out and kind of guide them and uh, tell them a little bit more about what ASPE is all about and uh, encourage them to, to participate. All right, perfect. All right. Well, I appreciate the uh, the time that you've taken, and uh, you know, uh, covering covering the uh, uh, the Society of Professional or uh, Plumbing Engineers. I re- really appreciate your time, Mitch. You're welcome, Matt. Well, thank you. I appreciate the time spending here. It's been a great conversation. Thank you. All right. Thanks again to Mitch Clemente for taking the time to chat with us. Check out the show notes for more links and things that he mentioned during the interview. You can find those show notes at HVAC360.com slash 87. As promised, my three highlights for this interview are... Highlight number one, the book resources or the resources. Uh, these books, it's a, it's a set of four, um, and they are very... How, how shall I put it? They're very actionable. They're very written down to earth. You know, there's a lot of books that are out there that, you know, especially if you compare them to some of the ASHRAE volumes, uh, which are very, very theoretical, hard to get through. These are very easy to understand. And I, you know, they're actually incredible. If you get your, if you get a chance, uh, to get your hands on them, uh, definitely do that. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is become a member of ASPE. So number two. Uh, getting involved, definitely get involved. I mean, obviously, Mitch had mentioned, you know, his journey through ASPE. Um, and also, there are other groups. If uh, uh, there are other groups that are subgroups of ASPE, uh, which are uh, women in ASPE, which is WOA, and they also have a ASPE Young Professionals group. Uh, for those of you who are under 35, unlike myself, um, and they have some great tours and social events, and if you are somebody who gets intimidated by being around a bunch of uh, older engineers uh, and you don't fit in or you want to be able to connect with somebody that's maybe closer to your age, uh, that's a, definitely a good group to get involved with, um, and that's AYP. And takeaway number three, if you don't know an answer to something, ask someone. Uh, and if you don't know who to ask, that's a good hint that you should start making a list of different experts that you can you can talk to it's always good when you meet somebody to find out where their ex- area of expertise is and, and and find out exactly you know what kind of information you can glean from them um, a lot of cases this you know goes back to uh, talking to you know or finding a good manufacturer's rep um, if it's something as simple as that, like I need to know more about pumps or I need to know some more about piping or, you know, different specialty kind of products, that's where you can go. Uh, but there are some things that are just, 
you know, engineering design questions that you may not necessarily, you know, that's that's not easy for a manufacturer's rep to be able to identify that. You really have to go to another engineer, another designer that's been working in the field for a while to be able to contact them and get their take on um, how you can solve your problem. So that does take effort, but it is so rewarding. And it's it's something that you don't always have to use all the time, but it's always good to have it in your back pocket in case you definitely need it. Um, you never want to get backed into a situation where you don't ask that next question, you make a mistake, and you get yourself into a whole lot of trouble. That's not where you want to be. You want to make sure that you can get a second and third opinion on your design or your interpretation and you know it could even be just like a code interpretation it doesn't necessarily have to be a hardcore engineering uh question uh but it could be a code interpretation and again you know again aspie has code officials that are involved that you can go there and ask them directly uh without having any sort of you know kind of on a a peer-to-peer basis all right well that's it for this week thanks so much for listening Uh, I hope this was helpful. If there is someone in in your life that is uh, wants to learn or needs to learn or should learn more about plumbing design, why don't you share this episode with them, grow your connection with them, increase the value of that connection. As I mentioned before, if you you know at the top of the show, please subscribe if you haven't already at hvac360.com and get that in that pipeline of weekly updates. And if you are so moved to do just one more thing, I'd be deeply honored if you'd leave me a rating on iTunes. All right, well, that's a wrap for this episode of HVAC 360. I'm Matt Nelson, helping you go further and faster in the world of HVAC and plumbing. And as always, know what you build and share what you know.